Howdy and welcome to Pell Riders Woodshed. And today I'm going to take a little detour again and make a marking gauge out of this kit I got on Taylor Toolworks. I'll put a link down in the description. I got the idea from a popular YouTuber named Jonathan Katz Moses. Um, he has a video on how to make these. I'll also put that in the description below. It comes with a rod, a cutting blades which hook to the end of the rod with the screw and this is a tensioning knob um, and it comes with inserts to put into the wood to guide the tensioning knob against the rod. You put these all in a piece of wood four by about two and a half by about an inch and a quarter thick. So I'm going to use this piece of wood that somebody gave me um, I was told that it was black oak, which is a type of red oak. Since it's only three quarters of an inch thick, I'm going to have to cut two pieces and glue them together. I'm going to probably cut this bottom piece here and then this piece here. Glue these two pieces together to make a hole. And hopefully it'll look cool because of the, the grain here. So, I did a test run using cheap pine. Um, it's far from good, but it taught me the things that I need to know, like how to get it more square and what size holes it has in it. And if you don't know what a marking gauge actually does, say I want to put this piece of wood on the edge of this piece of wood, like this, and cut a what's called a rabbit joint in the edge of this so this will fit down in the wood like that. I can measure the width like that and tighten it down. Then I run the marking gauge against the edge of this piece of wood. And it leaves a mark where I can cut it or chisel it out or whatever I want to do. Well, I completely forgot to turn on the camera when I was cutting this wood. I checked out this piece of oak. I was going to cut a piece out over here. But this crack right here is in the way. Um, I was looking at the grain over here and over here. And I cut pieces off of that because it's got some really cool modeling in there. Both sides. I don't know which side I'm going to use first, but I'm going to glue these together. This one's pretty cool too. Um, wait, which side? This side. I've got my markings on it, but... It's pretty cool. So I'm going to use these. So next I want to get a rough shape on both halves before I glue them together. For this I'm going to try to use this skill saw. I haven't tried it yet on hardwood. So I'm hoping I can get it to work right. Well, we'll see how it goes. All right, so I got my basic shape and I glued it together. Now I got to sand it down. All 
All right, so I got the basic shape sanded down, but there's still a few little gaps between the two pieces. So I'm gonna make a little bit of wood paste and fill them in. All right, done with that. Had to get it out of the sun so it would focus. But you can see the curves around the back side and a little rounding on the face side. Next step is to drill the holes and then I'll do some fine sanding and then it's ready for finish. So I have to drill two holes in this one that goes all the way through for this to go through and then one that I'm going to put in the back here for this to go in. This bolt tightens down to hold this into place once you get the, the measurement that you need. So the biggest problem that I had with this when I was doing my test piece over here is trying to get it square here. If you can see I'm a little bit off there and And a little bit off on that side and since I don't have my drill press set up yet the only solution I could come up with is to drill a hole in a 2x4 that's how I did the the test piece um, but I didn't get the hole exactly straight so I'm gonna sp spend a few minutes trying to get in another 2x4, I'm going to try to get a square hole in a round hole, a squared up hole. Anyway, none of that worked, so plan C. I temporarily drug my drill press out of the corner, and I'm setting it up just for these two holes. So even though this is not ready to use permanently, I'm gonna use it for this one time. First of all, I needed to make sure that this was square. I did that by putting a, a shim under a piece of wood. This thing is not ready to be used yet. I have a lot of work to do on it, and I can't get it level right now, so the shim's gonna have to do for now. But I got it level and that's all it counts. I'm going to sandwich this in between these two pieces of wood um, so I can get a clean hole in that. Now I think this hole is going to be a little bit easier to center and get square because this table is only off in this direction and not back to front. I can adjust this by turning this back and forth in the vise, which I already did. You can see that the line is lined up perfectly with the drill bit. <laughs> you can also see that when I drilled this, this hole that I was a little off center, so I'm gonna have to go a little off center this way up here too. This first hole was quarter inch hole and the threaded plug that goes in there is gonna be 3 8 inch outside diameter. 
So I need to go down about a half inch into this hole with a 3 8 inch bit. I need to do the final sanding now. Got a pretty dirty messing around with the holes. Last step before assembly, finishing. I'm gonna use boiled linseed oil and then paste wax over the top of that. Finally ready to put this thing together. So I didn't want to end this video without telling you all the problems I had and all the mistakes I made. So here they are. So the first mistake I made was that I didn't countersink this hole in here. So I came back just a while ago and I'll show you the video right here. I countersinked it with a countersink bit and put a little bit of linseed oil and some wax on it and fixed it up. And now that's just fine. The so the blade goes in flush and doesn't stick out now. Second mistake I made was I just took the word of Jonathan Katz Moses, great YouTuber and very good woodworker, but he had the sizes of the drill bits a little bit off. The drill bit for the rod, um, he was using millimeters. I, I'm pretty sure it's because this came from Canada. It was eight millimeter and maybe an eight millimeter would have worked, but I don't think it would have worked as good as 5 16 5 16 fits in and moves without it jiggling around um, it's a tight fit and it's great I could not find an 8 millimeter anywhere around where I'm at so 5 16 um, second one is the I think he said it was a 25 64 I couldn't find one of those either so I went to a size smaller, which is a 3 8 and a 3 8 work great for the insert. It worked great for that hole. The last one was the quarter inch. The quarter inch was the only one that I really had that he had mentioned, and it's for the, the diameter of this. The threads still dig into the wood, and when you're using a hard wood, that makes for a really, really super tight fit. And I had to use pliers to get this in and out. Even when I had it up against this rod, I couldn't tighten it or loosen it without a lot of effort. And it's not supposed to be that way. And then, then another problem that went along with that is on his video, Jonathan's video, he mentions putting this side in and this side out. I think it's just because this side's smoother and it'll look nicer. But with this side in, if you have any problem at all, you have to find other means to get this out because I played hell trying to get it out. If you look at this, I had to use, and I'll show the video here, I had to use an easy out to get this out and that was not easy.
hard to focus this off. But if you can see the insides here, wow, the focus is really bad. Come on, focus, 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 focus. Well, you can't see it. Focus sucks on this camera, but the inside of this thing is so tore up. And luckily, they sent you two of these with the kit. So this one's gone. And now I'm gonna have to use this one. But what I did is I ended up getting the quarter inch bit. I went in and reamed the hole out just enough so this bolt will go in and out without having to dig threads into hard oak. So I got it now and the knob, much easier to turn, loosen and tighten. And now we're good. All right, I hope you liked that video. If you did, like, share, subscribe, support my channel if you can with PayPal or Patreon. All in the links below. And hope to see you next time. Adios! <laughs>